to the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayofai Oshie, who has expressed concerns over Thursday's Supreme Court's judgment affirming local government's right to receive monthly allocations directly from the Federation account. The chieftain of the People's Democratic Party emphasized that despite the court judgment, state houses of assembly and the governors will always be a clock in the wheel of local government autonomy. Fayoshe said this when he featured as a guest in an interview while stressing that nobody from the grassroots can emerge as a local government chairman without the support of a governor. The equity politician said that both the courts and the federal government cannot take the baby from the mother. <laughs> wow. I mean, mm. there is now a baby and there is now a mother. A mother, yes. It is no longer three tiers of government that no. are independent. It's baby and mother. It's that now a baby, baby and mother. Baby and mother, yes. And none, the, the, the other cannot ascend without the other. Yeah, exactly. The one cannot the, the ascend baby without, cannot without, without, without the mother. mother. Yes. <laughs> What's your take? Well, uh, What's your take? Well, uh, if uh, you ask me, your fire I will say that... Uh, you know, the former governor of Ekiti State is just telling us the reality. Okay. You know, you know now uh, the Supreme Court, you know, let us know what the ideal situation should be. Okay. You know, or point out what the reality should rather be. But uh, as it is in our political landscape in Nigeria, you know, local government and uh, state government is just a mother and baby relationship. Mm. Now, uh, like, as, uh, like we said earlier, like I said earlier, you know, leadership in Nigeria is an integration from the micro level to the macro level, from the grassroots, you know, to the federal government. Now, having said that, you will see that now uh, the governor of a state, you know, the powers the governor of the state has, both uh, as, an, as a public office holder, then as his personality as a human being, before he will get to that position, you know, is enormous. To the point that every other person under him or her, in the case of uh, having female governor in Nigeria, which uh, we almost had in Nansarawa State, in Andamawarada, you know, every other person under him bowed to their whims and caprices. So, you know, now you are talking about local government autonomy when we have not addressed the way politics is played in Nigeria. If you have not addressed that, you know, you are just a, it's just an academic exercise. What we are going to see is a situation where, you know, the local government chairman, chairman, when they eventually emerge, will be playing to the dictates of their respective state governors. In the first place, who is the body that is going to conduct local government elections? Mm. Who is going to appoint? the person that is going to conduct local government election. Funny enough, we are seeing in, across the country during general election where, you know, even when INEC being a body instituted by the federal government, bringing their officers to states, and, you know, they are, they are more or less kidnapped by the state executives, you know? Yeah. And then uh, you see a situation where whatever the state executive wants, per se, is what the, the INEC will do. Then we are not talking about the residents, uh, uh, we are not talking about the state electoral commission here, that as it is, as it's currently constituted today, if the, the, that body is appointed by the governor, the head, the chairman, is appointed by the governor, then we now have a multi-party system where if Mr. A says no, hmm. Mr. B will take advantage and tell you yes, such that a governor can be in a PDP, for instance, and then you start to support a candidate that says yes to him in Labour Party. Mm. Because until the governor is not the state executive, is not in position to one, appoint who conduct local government election, two, does not have influence as far as sponsorship of the various candidates are concerned, until that situation is addressed, we are still going to have a situation where you will bow before the dictate of the 
governor. Uh, but we, we have Before you emerge, we have a similar as situation. a local government chairman, uh, I, I know and we, you will continue to yeah. do its biddings. But we do have a similar situation, although there has not been much bowing okay. involved in it. The, 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 the umpire of the of the, uh, the National Electoral Commission of INEC is being appointed by the president. But the president does not have as much as overbearing power over the state governors per se. Why is it then that the state governors have so much overbearing powers over the local government chairman and they still appoint, when they still appoint the, 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 the CX, the state independent, uh, if they are independent though, I, I still question that word, uh, the state electoral commissions. So why, what the disparity on or, or the balance of powers with the, that of the governors, with that of the president? The reason is very simple. Okay. If I'm coming to your house, you welcome me. So you're welcoming me to your house many times does not have, you have little or nothing to do with whoever that sent me to your house. So when the, whoever that has been appointed to command the electoral processes in the state at the federal level, when you come to the state, you know, you will go to see the governor. And then you also look at uh, 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 policies of stomach infrastructure, exactly. as is currently being played in Nigeria for God knows how long. So whoever that is appointed to come and do one thing or one thing or the other in the state, whether politics, election or what have you, conducting election or what have you, you know, you must be with the governor on the same table, and uh, the wine and the uh, and the uh, peanut will be offered to you. Yeah. And uh, because of the politics of stomach infrastructure, you are likely not, you are likely going to say yes and no. So from there, then it becomes a bedroom affair between the state executive and uh, whoever that is sent from the federal, okay. you know. And then, you know, the, you know, the, the presidents are situated here, and the, those at the federal level, you know, they are so occupied for them to leave how many ministries, how many parastatas, how many government agencies, how many external relations, and start uh, putting an eye on the person they sent to a particular state. Mm. Then don't also forget that the, the, the loss of government appointees at the federal level are sent by the state governors. They are the ones that recommend a, a, a very large percentage of those that are appointed at the federal level. Very true. Very so, true. what is there? What, what are we saying? The, the, as much as the president has all his powers, he's also a loyalty, a loyalist rather, so the to the governors. governors. So the governors so are the true The governor emperors. can even call the president and say, send so so person to me or whoever that is working, the rep representing the president for, to send whoever to the states. They can easily call them and say, send social person to my states. That is the person I want and it to be done. So as long as the way politics is played, the way politics is constituted in Nigeria is not addressed, we will continue to find ourselves in a glacuna where uh, the position of Mr. Fayoshe the former uh, 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 Kitty State governor, his position will continue to be the reality where the local government chairman are nothing but babies that are fucking from the governors as their mothers. Oh, man. Oh. That's a, a very, very grim but true ex uh, representation of facts. Of the reality. Of the matter reality, of yes. That is it. That is it. And uh, it's only on ATM politics that you can have the opportunity of having this analysis. And we plead on you to always tune in at 4 p.m. every weekdays to get the best of political analysis as it concerns politics of Nigeria. Moving to former Director General of the Obi Dati Presidential Campaign Organization in the 2023 presidential election, Doi Okupe. He has reacted to a barrage of criticisms trailing his open support for President Bola Tinubu's administration. Okupe had, in an interview, said that he knew that Tinubu was the better candidate despite his association with the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, before the elections. However, the turnaround led, 
led to many Nigerians labeling him a traitor. But in a post on X on Monday, Okupe came out to clarify his stance, saying, In a game of politics, there are no permanent friends or enemies, but only permanent interests. Let me hold it there. Is he right? Concerning the fact that he worked assiduously with Peter B and Dati as, as a staunch supporter and an administrator of their campaigns and their, the, the hopes that they had to occupy the number one seat in Nigeria. And he is saying here that all the while I knew that Tinubu had capacity. I know Atiku Abubakar, I know Peter Obi, but I still knew that Tinubu has more capacity. And when the backlash came out, he said, no, that you are, you are getting these things wrong. That in politics, there are no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, but permanent interests. And I know that many obedience, per se, will take offense to this stance. But is he wrong? Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, many obedience will take exception to his stance. <laughs> yes, you know, if you look at, you know, across the country, the obedience have been so, let me say, the, 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 the main obedience. Because I can see what is happening. If we can, all this while, before he came out to start airing all these things we are hearing now, every person referred to him as an obedient. So that's why we say the, the real obedience will take serious exception. In fact, they are, they are, they are burning in their hearts. In fact, if they see Okupe, <laughs> I'm sorry to use the word, maybe they will just look for one liter of oil that is costing close to a thousand and now just for to buy and set him on fire. You know? Uh, now, uh, going to the, the core issue, you know, as far doing Okupe is concerned, now, you know, leaning towards a total support for the president, Bola Tinibu. Now, one can ask himself, given how, w what played out during the campaign, as far as his own involvement is concerned, is he just waking up? Is he that he was dreaming of this while? Saying that uh, from the onset, he know that uh, Bola Tinibu is the best among the bunch. Now, let's assume, is he that he was dreaming at the time? Then he just waking up. Or we should start questioning if, you know, or it's, a, it's not a question of morality. Where you know that A is black, you call it white. You know that B is white, you call it black. For whatever reason, I don't understand. Now you are coming out to tell us that um, all this while, you know that uh, Bola Tinibu is the number one person among all the candidates and all the rest of them. And, and uh, you are come to tell us, you are come to tell the obedience today, and uh, for all you care, any person that, 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 any person that decides to have a different opinion should shut up. Nobody should disturb your peace. This is where you stand now. I think uh, that is a question of morality. That Don Yokupe need to come out to tell Nigeria. You know, that, come on, you, you, you don't do this. You don't do it. The election is just yeah, yesterday. Then we are talking about the obedience as it were, are talking about consolidation towards 2027. And here you are, every day, you know, the tree is being pruned down. Some of our politicians and our public figures should learn to cover their faces in shame. That is a message I will have, I have for Doi Okupe as it is today, for whatever he has expressed. That, uh, you know, I'm not saying that uh, it's not right. That's what I'm saying. We are talking about the question of morality. Yeah. We are talking about the question of morality. Because his involvement in the past general election is well documented. <coughs> Why should you come now and start telling us the least expected of you as a human being with conscience? as a human being at your level that is expected to have moral values, for you to come and tell us that, uh, you know, you know all this why. So are you not trying to tell us that we are trying to deceive us? Or you are just playing to the gallery? That you come out now to tell us that uh, all along, you know that it is, is this man. Okay, on what basis 
on what ground we are on, on, on what moral ground we are you supporting Peter will be the candidate of the Labour Party and the, and the face of the obedient movement. So to me, what he's doing right now, as far as the same human out there is concerned, does not add up. Oh, but let us look at a juxtaposition with what's happening in River State. As at now, there are two camps in the PDP. And you hear a lot of people seem vanguard, seem vanguard, simplified and all that. And just that is how some of the doyo coupes we are sim simplifying. They yeah. are simplifying yeah. now. For the obedient and for the OB. Yes, and uh, uh, before you know, there will be a time to, that, uh, you know, the, the clock. Yes, yes, likely the to be a time. The ticking of the clock will, we, we, will, we, we, we change. will also change. Okay. And you will now see them say, ah, all the while I knew that it you was know? Mickey, but I just wanted to. So, do you, is it wrong to have subservient and also most spies? Are they not part of the political system? Okay. In any politics? Well, uh, you know, uh, the case of River State is a peculiar one. And at the same time, when you look at the impact on the life of the United States even in River State, it's also unfortunate. Now, uh, People shouting, same, same uh, movement, same vanguard today, turning up tomorrow. Of course, every sane person who knows how politics play in Nigeria should expect that. Same himself should not be disappointed when the same people that are blowing trumpet for him, if his full soldiers, when they will turn against him, he should not be surprised. And uh, I will advise him, you know, to tread carefully, you know, when it comes to the possibility of having moles in his camp who are shouting his name today, you know? And then uh, we also have a situation where, you know, people will play drum for him and then he dance his way to his grave, his political grave. <laughs> so uh, the governor of the state, as the river state, you know, he need to watch it. Otherwise, the same story that we are hearing from Don Yokupe, we are going to hear similar story from those who are playing the drum for him to dance, mm. as it is currently in River State. So is it, is it that in politics, politics is not just for the Christians, it's also for men of all faith, even for those of no faith. So is being subservient, is being a mole, not part of a political process, are they wrong in doing what they are doing? It is to the achievement of their goals. What do you think? As it is uh, generally postulated or generally affirmed, you know, there's no uh, politics is about interest, and on that ground, there's no permanent friend or permanent enemy. Now, if that is okay, as far as society is concerned, then you cannot say they are wrong. Who cannot say that? Because, for instance, if uh, there is a particular thing that draws attention of you know, political play, a political player to another political player or to for a follower to a leader as politics, as it were in politics. And then that particular interest that took you there, you know, that makes you to say, okay, I'm pitching my tent, I'm, I'm, I'm pledging my loyalty to this particular uh, uh, leader. That thing is no longer there. What do you think will happen? Mm -hmm. Of course, there will be a reversal of loyalty. Then, uh, in terms of uh, uh, one being a mole, of course, it's also a political reality, you know, that I come to pledge lo loyalty to you. Meanwhile, I'm a spy. I'm a mole in your camp. Then, of course, uh, 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 post-relationship, that is, after it is done, whatever thing that has been the secret, binding us together or, or or giving you the, the bone and muscles to move forward in your, in your own camp. I can always divulge it to the next person, you know? And that is what is happening right now. Mm. Now I can see how uh, 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 Donyo Kupe has attempted or has succeeded even to reduce the political value of uh, Peter Obi, the face of the obedient movement, you know? That the president of this country, Peter Obi contested against that a lot of ordinary citizens queued behind him and said, you are the one we want. The Yokupe is telling us today that uh, the president today is better than Peter Obi. Mm. 
It's a big blow. It's a big political blow to the fortune of Peter Obia, to the political fortune of Peter Obia, as far as I'm concerned. So, don't you occupy? If he's there listening to me, can be referred to as a mole in the camp of Peter Obi. Thank you. Whoa! The presence of moles and the lack of shame and embarrassment on the faces of political players in our polity. We have been discussing with Ogenekere Vincent Okoro. I wish we could add more time to what we have now, but time is not always in our favor. But we will plead on him that same time next week, we should have him here on stage again to teach, educate, and also enlighten us more on the political terrains and happenings in our dear country, Nigeria. And this is where we wrap it up on this episode.